As an alone viewer, you are normally coming in to the experience right as we launch, right as our actual solitary time in the wilderness begins. But there's a lot more to the alone experience that happens before then. Some seasons you're lucky and you get to see a special like we had before the freeze for the frozen season to show you a little bit of our time in orientation camp on the ground in the general area that we're gonna be having our experiences, but before we actually get on that helicopter to get dropped. Usually you don't even see as much as that. So there's definitely a big gap in terms of what it takes actually getting to that location. This video is about my journey to Labrador for Alone Frozen. Now, there's always a ton of preparation and a lot that goes into just getting ready for the experience before you even set foot on that plane. And in my case, that was multiplied even more because I'm someone for whom making my own clothing and gear out of traditional materials, a lot of raw materials that I make myself from wool and deer hides and what have you, is really important to me. So that meant that my preparations for alone were way more intense than the average participant. And keep in mind that we are always finding out about going and where our location is going to be in the summertime. And the location is always a far northern locale. So just getting standard gear for northern winter in, say, July or August in a warm climate is a big enough challenge. But if you add making your own gear on top of that, it's pretty significant. So my time and my prep was already pretty intense, pretty frenetic, pretty stressful. And then... <laughs> Mirroring that, I had such a hard time just getting to Labrador. Remember to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and hit the notifications bell if you want to know when my videos come out. And please consider joining me on Patreon. It's what allows me to do these videos and you get all kinds of amazing benefits, including interactive calls with myself and the other frozen participants to ask your questions. It's hard traveling anyway during times of COVID, but Canada has a lot of restrictions and particularly at that time, there were a lot more restrictions than there are now. And there's a really narrow window to get your testing done so that it's valid not just for your first flight, but valid for your last flights. If you're going somewhere really remote like we were, it was at least two days to get to Labrador. That means you have a very narrow window between taking the test and being sure that those results are still seen as valid for your very last flight. And the tests are only good for three days. On my first journey to alone on season six, I missed my flight. It was one of the most stressful things that has ever happened to me. I really thought that it might mean that I wouldn't get to go out on season six and that an alternate would be put in in my place. Luckily, I got there, it all worked out, but you'd better believe that there was no way I was gonna risk anything like that for my flight to Frozen. So I got to the airport with hours and hours to spare, plenty of time, only to be told that my test results weren't in yet, so I couldn't get on my flight. Now, I'd been told that so long as my test results came in before my first flight to Canada, that I should be fine, and they were supposed to be in with plenty of time before that. Turns out that wasn't the case because all of the flights were booked together. I had to have them before my first flight, and the testing facility was just late getting them out. So there I am, and for a second time, not able to make my flight to the first location where I'm having a layover. Very stressful. Luckily, they ended up being able to get me on a later flight once my test results were in, and I made it there in time for my connecting flight in Denver, which was fun because Callie was in Denver too, having flown from Montana, and she should have been on an earlier flight to Toronto, but that flight was canceled. So she was still in the airport by the time I got there, and they were rebooking her onto my flight. So she and I are standing there in line together to get onto that flight and I get to the counter and they say, oh no, no, there's something wrong here. You're not on this flight. I say, no, I, here's my ticket right here. I am on this flight. Callie was standing past the gate in the hallway waiting for me to get onto that on-ramp on the plane and they're saying, no, you're not on this flight which was incredibly stressful, a bunch of phone calls begging for them to let me on the flight, but they had already put all of those folks from Callie's canceled flight onto it, so there wasn't room for me. So Callie got onto my flight, but for the second time that day, I didn't make it onto my flight. And it was hilarious because Callie is sitting on the plane and she's watching the bags get loaded, and because everybody gets issued the same backpack, she was watching them load my gear 
onto her plane while telling me that I couldn't get onto that flight myself. So, <sighs> so I made it only as far as Denver my first day and not to Toronto, which also meant that now my window of my test results being valid is getting smaller and smaller and I'm really pushing it to get to Canada on time. So had to spend the night in Denver, had to retest, get another COVID test the next morning in Denver. Being in Denver a little longer meant I got to go to the lovely smoothie place that Callie had recommended. So there was one benefit there. So then instead of flying from Toronto, which I was supposed to, they ended up booking me through Montreal, which was really exciting because my dad and his wife happened to be in Montreal visiting her mother. I knew that I wasn't gonna have a long enough layover to see them, but I was kind of excited that I was going at least through the city where they were rather than through Toronto that I had no association with. So I make it to Montreal. I am there going through customs, getting myself to my next flight to Newfoundland, but no. <laughs> because customs decided that they needed to search my bag because I said that I had a bow and arrows, which they consider a weapon. And I guess they kind of just put in the same class as carrying a gun in your bags. Not sure because I had a takedown bow and my arrows in a different bag. So there was no way that this was classified to be used immediately as a weapon. But regardless, my bags got searched in Montreal and that delayed me enough that I didn't make my connecting flight. So third flight, I don't make because of circumstances beyond my control. Luckily, called up my dad and they came and got me. Well, actually they told me where they were and I took a taxi to the place that they had rented as an Airbnb during the time that they were there visiting. So I got to have a surprise visit and spend the night with my dad and his wife on my way to Alone Frozen, which what an amazing thing, right? What an incredible blessing to get to spend time with some of your most loved ones and have them send you on your way with well wishes. So it was actually a really magical thing that I missed those flights. I got to the airport the next morning with time to spare, but they were doing construction and the line just to get through security check wrapped around the entire airport three times. I was certain I would miss it again, but luckily I got there just in time and made it to Newfoundland. And that was the only time I had ever been to Newfoundland and I didn't know when I was gonna be back. So you'd better believe I was very motivated to get out and see this amazing and beautiful island. It was an incredible day. I managed to talk to a woman there at the tourist office who agreed to watch my bags for me while I took off and went on an amazing hike, which I actually do have some footage of to share with you. I am hiking up Signal Hill in Newfoundland and it's an insanely beautiful, day and the seagulls are chirping and the sky is blue and the path is covered in meadow knapweed which is the plant that I did my graduate research on. So it's pretty exciting and strangely familiar which I'm digging and I watched Frozen 2 on the plane which I felt like was fitting and totally identifying with Elsa with, you know, the white hair and connection to the frozen Northlands and what have you. So I've decided that I'm going to use my magic on the coming season and it's gonna be awesome. So I'm feeling good and enthusiastic and refreshed and really excited that my flights lined up such that I got to spend a night with family and hike around the island of Newfoundland. This is looking down from Signal Hill. This is the mouth to the bay of access to St. John's Harbor. Gorgeous water, beautiful rocky cliffs, berries along the trail. It was epic. So here I am hiking the beautiful hills above St. John's and hike to this beautiful little fishing village of Kitty Bitty for my lunch. And I have to say that these days, having known what it is to go for a long time without food and looking at the prospect of potentially being in such a position again very quickly, I am really excited about any opportunity to have good food and it feels like a little fishing village off the coast of Newfoundland, probably a pretty good possibility, right? So here I have head down to the little village to appreciate one of my last meals before I get to location for alone. Standing on the pier, looking at all the docks of Kitty Vitty and then found the Kitty Vitty Brew Company, which was looking good. Got a table on the deck and an IPA and some delicious fish and chips. 
So yeah, not too bummed that I missed my flight. After a beautiful hike and a delicious lunch, I walked from Kitty Vitty all the way to downtown on the waterfront, and I've managed to find a lovely shop while walking around that had a bunch of Labradorite for sale. Now, Labradorite is a stone that I already knew and loved, but knowing that I was heading to Labrador itself, where this stone comes from and what it's named after, and then rather than a chain, this pendant was set up to put on a cord of some kind, so I was able to use buckskin that I tanned myself from deer skin to make this magical totem to bring to really pay homage to that beautiful place and show how important it was for me to really dive deep into what Labrador is and what it means. So really, really beautiful blessing on my way through St. John's. So it took me three days to get to Goose Bay, Labrador. I got there a day behind everybody else on Alone Frozen, just like happened on season six, arriving a day late in the Northwest Territories. <laughs> so I've got quite some travel karma, but in this instance, it was a million blessings, right? That day in Newfoundland and that time with my family and that smoothie in the Denver airport. I mean, come on, right? <laughs> so it was so lovely to get with the rest of the group and finally meet up in Goose Bay, Labrador. And surprise, surprise, it was snowing from the second I arrived in the parking lot of the hotel in Goose Bay, just a little portent of the weather to come. So got there, got to experience the Labrador weather firsthand. And then I got schooled on the fact that we had a bit of a team uniform. We all got these awesome boots in Goose Bay that are called prairies. Then everybody wore them out on a loan. None of us were planning to bring them, but they were so good. And it was what all the locals recommended. So Goose Bay, just with enough time to get the team uniform together and then to hop on a float plane, my first time on a float plane, to go from the big city, which is not very big, in Labrador, out to the remote wilderness location where orientation camp was gonna be. Getting the float plane loaded up to head out to orientation camp. <laughs> landed on the big river and made our way to each of our individual homes for the next week or two there at Home Sweet Home, our little tent village on the shores of the big river in Labrador, Canada. Keep following this channel for lots more backstory and preparation for my time in Alone Frozen. Thanks guys, look forward to sharing more with you soon. <laughs>